Listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Podcast. Amen. Amen. Praise God again. We just want to thank the Lord for allowing us to be back in the studio one more time tonight. You know, just to bless you tonight with His Word. And we want to thank Angel Sessions. She's such a special person for allowing us to intro and to close out with her music. And again, we open up tonight with her sweet song, Take Me. And that's what we want God to do is just to take us in his loving arms and just love on us. And we want to say good evening again to all of my faithful listeners. This is Pastor Virginia Singleton of the Divine Church of Deliverance, a non-denominational ministry out of Florence, South Carolina, also known as Pastor V, broadcasting live every Thursday night at 8 o'clock p.m., Eastern Standard Time by way of Jerry Ross Live, Worldwide Broadcasting Radio out of Baltimore, Maryland. And again, as always, before we go any further, we always have to give honor to the one who makes this show possible every Thursday night. And without him, we would not be able to do this for you on Thursday night. So let's take a moment and pause and let us honor him by way of prayer. Father, we thank you again for allowing us to take this moment tonight to come before you and give you honor and give you glory and give you praise for allowing us to come into your presence, not because we are worthy and not because we deserve it, because you love us just that much that you will allow us one more opportunity to come before you and give this word to your people Hopefully this night something will be said 
that will touch the heart of someone that's listening that will change their life and transform them that they will want to be closer to you. We thank you. In your precious name, Jesus, we pray. And we say amen. And again, we want to say welcome to all of you. Welcome back to the Transforming Life Bible Radio Show where you can hear a word from the Lord that will change and transform your life. Tonight, in honor and recognition of today, it is National Day of Prayer all over the world. So we're going to talk about something tonight. And our topic is developing our prayer life. We all need to have a prayer life. Our supported scripture text will come from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. And it says, very simple, very short, pray without ceasing. Three little words, pray without ceasing. Hallelujah. So we just want to kind of discuss what that scripture is saying tonight. And then after we talk about that, we're going to kind of give you a little outline and give you some pointers on how you can develop your own prayer life. Well, definitely as Christians, those of us who say that we have already um, have a relationship with the God of our understanding, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we should already have a prayer life. But sometimes we recognize that the cares of this world can press down on us so heavy till we feel that prayer is a burden and we can't find the time to pray. Saints, that's one of the most dangerous things that we can do is to not find time in our schedule during the day that we cannot take the time to communicate with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because that's all prayer is, is a form of communication where we take the time to talk to the Lord. And it's no different than if we sat down and we held a conversation with who we might consider our best buddy. We talk to the Lord. Prayer and intercession, when we talk to God, it draws us into a place of intimacy with him. And at the same time, it humbles us and it transforms us. My God, my God. When we bring our needs to God in prayer, we interact with his heart. It is just something about when we humble ourselves before God and submit to him in sincere prayer. Prayer touches the heart of God. And when we come before him and we need to recognize we can't just come before the Lord just any kind of way. We need to first of all come to him with a repentant heart. We need to get ourselves out of the way first. So don't think that we can come before the Lord full of all of our stuff and full of ourselves. So we need to get the first order of the day out of the way. We need to pray and ask God for anything that we are carrying on the inside of us that's not a God. We need to clean the house first. So we need to first repent and get self out of the way. And then as we honor ourselves before the Lord and submit, to who we recognize God in all of his holiness and who he is, then we can draw nigh unto the Lord 
that God will hear our plea as we cry out to him. And if you want to touch the hem of his garment, if you want God to let down the hem of his garment, that we might touch his heart, I challenge you to humble yourself before God. Then prayer and intercession, it causes us to internalize God's word because when we speak his ideas back to him, our minds are lit up and our hearts are touched. So see, we just can't just make up a set of words and and put in our own vocabulary anything we think that will sound good when we go before the Lord. See, God says, put me in remembrance of the promises that I've made to you. So we have to go to God and tell God what he's saying in his word, and then God will hear us. So we just can't tell God anything when we go before him. Tell the Lord back what he said to us in his word. So that's why it's so important that we must read the word of God. So when we get in a bad place in our lives and when we can remember what the word of God says, so we need to memorize some of the word of God. So when we go before him, we can repeat to the Lord what he said to us in his love letter that he had written to us. God will move when we tell him, when we remind him of what he wrote to us in his letter to us. See, his word gives life to us, and his word builds us up, and his word delivers us. See, mankind will tell us anything, but mankind don't always build us up because sometimes mankind can say some things to us that can rip us apart. And sometimes they make us feel like they just rip our heart right out of our chest. Lord have mercy. But everything in the word of God is there, even though it will reprove us, is there to improve us, not tear us down, but to build us up. My Lord, not to put us in bondage, but to deliver us and bring us out of those dark places where we have gone. We must be steadfast in prayer with great endurance. Why? Because Satan's goal is to undermine our faith. How would he do that? By tempting us to lose heart in our own confidence even while we are praying. The Bible promises that we will reap the benefits of the goodness of the Lord if we do not grow weary in our well-doing. So we have to always try to stay focused while we remain prayerful in the Lord because Satan comes to rob kill, and destroy. There is nothing that Satan has that he can give us. Satan has no love for us. So we must learn how to develop a good, solid prayer life in the Lord because we never know when something will happen in our lives and we got to call up prayer quick, fast, and in a hurry. But if we don't have a prayer life, Sometimes the kids of this work and get us so hard, we won't even know how to pray. We got to bend that knee. But know that there is no position of prayer. Most people pray down on their knees. But know that you don't always have to get the knee to pray. Sometimes you may not be in a place where you can bow down on your knee. But know that wherever you find yourself and you need a quick prayer, 
and you need to talk to the Lord, quick as in a hurry. You better be ready. You better be able. You better be equipped that you can communicate with your God just like that, as needed. Know that Christ was a praying man, and he is our example in prayer. And even Christ himself spent many nights praying. His custom was to pray much. He had a special place to pray. Many long seasons of praying made up his history and his character of prayer life. The Apostle Paul, he prayed day and night. Daniel prayed three daily prayers. And all that praying took time away from other important interests that I'm sure Daniel would have loved to participate in. But he took the time that was necessary to give honor to God in prayer. David prayed morning, noon, and night. Praying was doubtless on many occasions very long and involved. Yet, while we have no specific account of the time these Bible saints spent in prayer, it is indicated that they devoted much of their time to prayer. So, St. you see, we should not worry about how much time is spent in prayer. But what we need to understand, it is necessary that we pray. We need to stay prayed up. Praying is that when you work, you need to put aside some money in your bank account. Because you never know when a rainy day is going to come along and you're going to need some money in an urgent situation. And if you've got the money in the bank, you can always go and make a withdrawal. But if you don't have the money set aside, now you got to run around and worry about where the money is coming from. But if you have the money put aside, you can always go to the bank and make the withdrawal. Well, praying is the same way. You pray up. Hallelujah. Every day is that putting your prayer in the prayer bank. So when a situation come up, you don't have to feel that, Lord, have mercy. What am I going to do? Go to your prayer bank and withdraw your prayer out of the bank and say, Lord, yeah, I stand. And you know I stand in need. And, Lord, I don't have to worry about if you're going to come because I know they're going to show up. So put your prayers in the bank while you have the time so you have the prayer to call out and withdraw and to spend in the time that it is needed. Now, you need an action plan, hallelujah, in developing your prayer life. An action plan that will help you stay focused. You know, isn't this something, have you ever seen that when you bow down on your knees to pray, whether you're standing, whether you're lying prostrate, or it doesn't matter what your position is when you get ready to pray. Isn't it just something when you do decide to pray, it just seems that everything come in your mind that you need to do just cloud your mind all of a sudden. And you hadn't even thought about any of these things. But all of a sudden, everything just starts flowing through your mind. But you need to come up with an action plan that's going to help you when you decide that you're going to have your prayer time and communicate with the Lord, you know, how am I going to stay focused and how am I going to stay engaged in my conversation that I can keep my mind from wandering on everything else? Because the most important thing at that moment when you are praying, it needs to be your dialogue between you and the Lord. And you need to realize that when you are praying, you are talking not to an inanimate object, but you are talking to a real person, and that's Jesus. Well, 
you need some yeah, some things that you need to do and recognize he's setting up your action plan for your prayer life. You need to have a personal Bible plan. You need to read several either passages, you need to read either chapters, or even some of you who are very um, astute in your reading, you need to read even some books in the Bible every day. Not once a week, but every day you need to read from the Word of God. If that way, if you read every day, then your reading in the Bible and studying the Bible will become habit. And then you will become what we like to say is a habitual reader of the word. And it will become habit forming. Because, see, the more you do a thing, the more habitual you will become at doing it. And you will be less likely not to do it. And you will want to do it all the time. It becomes habit forming. The next thing that you need to do, you need to pray the Bible. That's what you're talking about, pray the Bible. Go in the Bible and find prayers. There's a lot of prayers that's in the Bible. If you don't know where to begin, go to the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms is a good place to start to find prayers. It's a full of prayers. Read the book of Psalms. Memorize some of the prayers that's in the book of Psalms. And when you go into prayer with the Lord, pray those prayers. As I've already said, I said, put me in remembrance of the promises that I made unto you. So when you pray back to the Lord, what he has said in his word, what you're doing, you are honoring the Lord with his word. And God is not going to refuse the word that he spoke himself. God is not a liar. So if he said it, he will honor it. So that's why we don't need to be making up these little fabulous prayers. Of course, they sound good. Yeah, they sound good. But God don't want to hear anything that sounds good. God wants to hear what he said because he will honor his word. Then don't be selfish in your praying. So make a prayer list for other people. Don't be so selfish that sometimes you can put other people on your prayer list because I'm sure in your circle of friends and and your uh, acquaintances, there are other people that be at need at times. So, so go before the Lord sometime and put those people on your prayer list. And then, so what does that say to the Lord? You know what? They, today, they are esteeming others above themselves. So I'm going to honor them because today they're reaching outside of themselves. They're not being selfish. And they're looking at the needs of others and putting other people's needs before their own. So pray for somebody else. And don't just pray for yourself all the time. Don't be selfish all the time. Pray for somebody else. Help somebody else sometimes. Then there are issues that go on in the world, in your environment. Pray for those issues. Pray for our politicians. Because God knows there's more than enough that's going on out there in the political world that we, the people of God, we need to be praying for, that God will cover us and take care of us. Why? He said, if my people who are called by my name, and we will humble ourselves, and we will pray, and we will seek God's face and turn away from our way away, what did he say? He said, he will hear from heaven, he will forgive our sins, and he will hear the lake. So if we will pray for what's going on in our political world, in the nations, and for other people, God said he will do some things and turn some things around. Then we can make a personal prayer list. Here when we take care of ourselves. Pray for God to change our heart. Clean our hearts up. Clean up our minds. And the little filthy thoughts come up in our mind. We know just because we say, don't think some little filthy thoughts ain't going to come up in our mind. Yes, they will. Pray for God to keep that mind clean. If you're in ministry, pray for God. Bless the ministry, Lord. Show me what I need to be doing. That this ministry will flourish. Ask God, Lord, what's my purpose? Show me what my purpose is that I might fulfill what you have called me to do. Lord, help me to walk in authority and, and, and convict me if I'm doing anything wrong. Convict my heart, God, because I don't want to do anything wrong. That's not of you, God. Convict me. Turn me around, God. Give me insight, fruitfulness, Lord. I'm going to trust you, whatever I do for you. Then pray for wisdom. So you, you're trying to develop a prayer life, and you don't want to do anything that's against the will of God for you. But God will already have a plan for you, 
And anything that's not in God's plan for you, you don't want to be doing that. So pray for wisdom that you only do those things that God has already for you. And as we grow in prayer, we need to delight in God and in his words. And he delivers us. When we delight in the Lord, the Lord will deliver us. But he said, delight thyself also in the Lord. Hallelujah. And he will give the desire of your heart. He washes us with his word. Satan cannot defeat us with his accusation and his condemnation when we spend time in prayer with the Lord. And saying, if we will pray more, we'll gossip less. Oh, my Lord, did y'all hear that? I'm going to say that again. That sounds good to me. If we pray more, we are gossip less. And the more time we spend with the Lord, the less time we are spent with the wrong people. Apostle Paul teaches us, again, at 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, to pray without ceasing. Now, this don't mean just walk around this moment of prayer all day long. There ain't no way possible you can just walk around praying all day long. Why? Because you've got to talk to other people sometimes. You've got to say something else sometimes. So don't misunderstand what he is saying here when he said pray without ceasing. Ceasing. But what he is saying, be consistent in your prayer life. Spend as much time as possible. Have certain time set aside that you will spend time in prayer with the Lord. Make appointments. Just like you make a doctor's appointment, make appointment, appointed times that you will go before the Lord. Say, this time is my time that I'm going to spend in prayer with the Lord. And don't you let nothing else distract you from spending your time in prayer with the Lord. We should never grow weary in our prayer life because this is the way that we communicate with our Heavenly Father. We need to pray for God's word to grip our minds and help us to make quality decisions, to walk circumspectly, walk uprightly, and walk in righteousness every day. He is counting on us to believe in his word and to work at developing solid prayer lines. It might cost us, and we might have to make many sacrifices. That means we might have to cut off some friends. Some of these folks that we got to hang out with, we might have to give up the little girl clicks. My Lord, my Lord. We might have to give up the little boy club. That's right. We might have to come up the many things. That's right. Oh, my. I know I'm hitting home tonight, but that's all right. Whatever it takes to develop a good prayer life and to stay in good standing with God, thanks to not, we got to be willing to do it. See, we all not to worry about what it's going to cost us if it means that we're going to have a closer walk with the Lord. But no matter what it costs us, no matter how many sacrifices we have to make, I guarantee you it will be well worth it whatever we have to give up to give us a better relationship with the Lord. Now, may his word empower you to obey his commands to pray. Read your Bibles daily and set your heart on being obedient and be transformed by the word of God. Now, just one last thought. We hear people say, prayer is the key to the kingdom. Well, let's just suppose if this statement is really, really, really the truth. If honestly speaking, and we will be honest with ourselves, when we look at our individual prayer life, even right now, as we are listening at this word tonight, how many of our keys wouldn't be any good? Mm. Just a point to ponder, because I can't hear any of you answering. Hallelujah. But guess what? 
the Lord can hear you. And even if you don't open your mouth and speak a word, God can read what's in your heart. Just think about that tonight. Just ponder on that. If your prayer life would be your key to get in the kingdom, could your prayer life get you in the kingdom tonight? Have God called you and said, let me see, can your prayer get you in the house? Lord, help me, Jesus. I pray that mine could, but none of us can sit in judgment and about it. All we can do is look at ourselves individually. And if we know that we have not been developing our prayer life, we can start tonight and say, Father, help me do what I need to do to get my prayer life in better order with you that I can have a better relationship with you. Now, before we close tonight, hallelujah, I want to show some love to some of my fellow podcasters. You know, it just, I love to just spread love all anywhere I can spread it at. I tell you, some of my fellow podcasters from the College of Power Training and Family, I'd like to congratulate my sister, Joyce White, on receiving the Woman on Fire Award. My brother, Charles Clark, on receiving the I Am a Testimony Award. And last but not least, my sister, Michelle Edmonds, on receiving the Visionary 2016 Award. My, 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 my. These are some special folks. They were all invited to three separate award ceremonies in D.C. and Atlanta. Your fans applaud you, and we love you. And again, we, too, love you all. Congratulations to every one of you. We love you, family. We also want to announce that part of the Power 21 will soon be launching the Done With Debt video series on Amazon, which addresses kingdom principles on how to conquer your debt issues. This video series is published by Positive Power 21. Now, say we all know just because we say it, that don't mean that we don't have no problems with our debt. Because some of us know that we have extended ourselves and we've taken on a little bit more than we can handle. So be looking for Done With Debt, that video series, when it comes to Amazon, that, that series that's going to be launched by Positive Power 21, and it will be coming real soon. I don't know about you, but I'm going to be looking. Now, you know what I say? I'm going to be looking because I want that series. All righty now. Thanks again for tuning in to the Transforming Lives Bible Radio Show. We are sponsored by Gerald Slack, Worldwide, and Positive Power 21. Oh, I tell you, this is the best broadcaster in the whole wide world. We are also plus by Pause and Power 21 are all. Our shows can be heard on demand at Jared Ross Live Worldwide, Podcast Channel 14, and can be viewed on YouTube. Pastor V is a published author. Her book title is Inspirational Encouragement and Personal Journal. Her book is available online at all major bookstores. And she's a radio personality on Spreaker Radio, iTunes, and Positive Power 21 Radio. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and our Periscope morning worship services every Sunday morning at 12 noon and Wednesday night Bible study at 6.15 p.m. I pray that you have been blessed by tonight's broadcast and hope your life has been transformed by the Word of God. Don't forget, to work on developing your prayer life. As always, it's been good. Angel, 
take us our own, we are almost there. This is Pastor V. Tune in next week. Remember, we love you. Good night, and we'll look for you next week. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Will you be ready?